Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. the Lord. Uh, this is the psalm for the day coming to you from Redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 2, Psalm chapter 2, verse 5, verse 6. Uh, but to put verse 5 and 6 in proper context and perspective, I'll read from verse 1, verse 6. The Bible says, Why do the even rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth said themselves and the rulers said, Take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bounds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and break them in his sore displeasure. Verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my, my, hill, my holy hill of Zion. Yesterday we considered that God can actually laugh in verse 3 and verse 4 of this chapter 2 of the Psalms. Um, when God laughs, he laughs the enemies to mockery. But today we are going to what God does also, that is God can speak. God can speak. Because verse 5 says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and verse them in his sore displeasure. And when God speaks, a lot of things happen. In Mark chapter 4, verse 29, God spoke against the storm and boisterous wind, and there was calm and peace where there was trouble. I pray for someone listening to this short exhortation that no matter the trouble you are in now, God is speaking into your trouble, and great peace and calm is coming to your life in Jesus' name. Also in Mark chapter 11, verse 14, Mark 11, 14, we saw God uh, speak again. He spoke to an unfruitful tree, and that unfruitful tree dried up immediately. I pray that God will speak to every unfruitful walk in your life. Things that don't bear the result that you want, things that are contrary to what God ordained you to do in life. As we are speaking now, God also is speaking to every unfruitful work of righteousness in your life, and they are drying up from the root in Jesus' name. In Genesis 18, verse 10, we saw God, he spoke again. Now he spoke to a barren woman. The name of this woman was Sarah. And after God spoke, in Genesis 18, verse 10, uh, the barren became fruitful. Because nine months after, uh, Sarah embraced a son called, uh, laughter called Isaac. As we are speaking, God is speaking in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare that every barrenness in your life, in your hand, in whatever you are into, we are end now in Jesus' name because God speaks. In Psalm 85, verse 8, Psalm 85, verse 8, the Bible says, I will hear what God will speak to his servant. He will speak peace to his people. May God Almighty speak peace to every facet of your life now, in Jesus' name. However, in context of what we are talking about today, God is speaking to his enemies and speaking to your enemy. Because every enemy of yours is an enemy of God. Now, the way God speaks in this verse 5 has another tonation. He is not as gentle as he spoke to Sarah in Genesis 18, 10. 
because now he's speaking to fight the enemy of your soul. The Bible is very clear. It said, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. What is wrath? Wrath means extreme anger. Extreme anger. Uh, there are so many areas in the Bible that you see God display um, anger. I will just take us into two so you will know what your enemies are expecting. Uh, even this, this, this moment. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible records that Eli came into the way of God's anger in his administration and uh, falling short in his paternal responsibilities. And God was angry with Eli. What, what was, the rest, was the result? Number one, in, a, in one single day, Eli lost two sons. He lost a daughter-in-law. The boy they gave birth to had a bad name called Ichabod. Eli too died. And the priesthood was taken away from Eli because of God's anger. I called that one five blows in one. So as, I, I, as, I, as we continue to talk about what God can do when he's angry, I see God giving your enemies five blows, five different punches. For every single one, they attempt against you because you will come in line uh, with the anger and the wrath of the living God. Then the Bible records again in that verse 5, it says, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Not only is it that God can be angry, God can vex enemies of your soul in his sore displeasure. What is to vex? To vex means to frustrate. It means God will frustrate your enemies because of his sore displeasure. In Numbers 23 and, um, and 24, Numbers chapter 23 and chapter 24, you can see God frustrate everything that Balak tried to do to Israel. Uh, his, his agreement with Balak, uh, between Balak and Balaam, became a fiasco. A fiasco is a shameful failure. I see God frustrate every action of the enemy against you in Jesus' name. Isaiah 44 verse 25 says, He frustrate the token of liars and make diviners mad. They are mad because they are frustrated. And finally in verse 6, God now says, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The word yet there means emphasis. God is saying yet. I'm still emphasizing it. That despite what the kings of this world are doing, I still establish my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Now let us listen to this place well. He's saying, I am the one that did it. He's my king, and the hill is mine. Verse 2 talks about the kings of this world. But this verse 6 is talking about the king of God. As the king of God, wherever God has placed you, nobody can bring you down. Because he is your, you are his king, and he is the owner of the holy hill. And nobody can bring you down. So child of God, never be afraid of the glorious height that God has put you. Nobody can bring you down from there. He is your king, is your God, and the mountain is his, his, his. The hill is his. The efforts are his. The kings of this world will fall for you, and you shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus. So I see somebody today expressing the power of God, and your enemies expressing the wrath of the living God. Now let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that has come with power and with grace and anointing. And I pray God Almighty, every one of your child that have been under this short exhortation, is there any king of this world, any ruler fighting them, arise in your wrath, arise in your sore displeasure, and fight them in the name of Jesus. And I pray for them, Almighty God, uh, regardless of the height you have put them, because you are the one that set them there, I declare nothing shall bring them down in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for doing it. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.